Guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another lesson. This is going to be super exciting. I'm back in the lab with Mike Beery. Here at 8 Under, this place, if you haven't checked it out, links in the description. It's one of the coolest places I've ever been, so Mike, welcome back. Thanks. Obviously from the last lesson, you guys saw what we worked on. We'll start with you know a couple of those swings with that foot back, and then we're going to start to put the feet together and widen out until we get to a normal stance. Okay. So it was really kind of tidying up the body movement just to make sure you know, for a good player like you, consistency is so important, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of making sure that the body's doing what it needs to do so that it doesn't affect the club in kind of a negative way. So now for the first part of this video, we're just gonna make some swings. Mike's gonna look at it and we're gonna see kind of if I've made any progress. And then from there, we're gonna move into the woods and the driver, which this is like something I've been like anticipating and couldn't wait for, honestly. We have some really exciting things coming up. We'll share more on that at the end of this video. Let's lock in here and, and, and make something happen. I'm gonna grab a seven iron, hit some balls here. Mike's gonna start critiquing me. Mike's doing his thing right now, he's analyzing. I love this. Okay, here's the deal, right? And it's, you know, it took me a second, I had to look at it for a little bit because there's not a lot of it there. But one of the things that we're gonna see here, like with the lower body, what I'm looking at right now is kind of the lower body and this right leg, right knee. And once we get to the top of the swing, we shift our weight toward the target, our hips start to rotate, and obviously the right hip is coming around, the left hip is moving back. It's really easy when this is happening to kind of kick this right knee in towards the golf ball. Mm -hmm. And really it would be nice to see that right knee work a little more in the direction of your left knee. Really we should be rolling a little more onto the side of the toe. See how my heel is leading the toe right now? Yeah. So this knee starts to work across. I have plenty of space. Mm -hmm. If this starts to fire in towards the golf ball, mm -hmm. now it starts to crowd the space mm -hmm. that I have with my hands and club and that can force you mm -hmm. to yeah. catch it more in the heel. So. You wanna see a drill? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this drill, what you're gonna do is you'll start with your setup, and then we're gonna place this underneath this, this right heel. If we go the wrong way, you know, if we go knee up, that's obviously gonna drop the club, okay. right? Yeah. In a normal full swing, like we said before, we'd like to see the heel kind of win the race in mm -hmm. terms of being in front of the toe. This will be slightly off the ground, but we see, you know, it's a very common fault to see this type of footwork. Mm -hmm. Good, raise that right foot up. Yeah, excellent, hold it right there. Do you feel that right foot yeah. kind of roll on this way? Yeah, exactly. it's here versus like just going. Yes. Yeah. Good. Now when you go to hit a shot, I want you to kind of hit, roll that right foot onto the inside, and then let the club drop. Let me take a quick look at this. Okay, I like that foot rolling onto the side like that. See how much more this is like firing towards us yeah, right now? exactly. It, and again, this is not like miles of difference. There's little movements that, that do make a difference, right? Exactly, and like we can see right here, see how there's a bigger space on the right hand side here between kind of a little bigger gap right here, mm -hmm. just cause that knee's firing yeah, in a little more. Exactly, yeah. This knee has come across the left knee sooner. You know, for those that are at home watching, this is something that we see quite a lot. And if you're struggling with shanking or, you know, hitting in the heel, this is a big one because, you know, we almost see this every day. And just go up to the top and stop. Good, slowly just kind of come down to impact here. Yeah, good. So great, so it's rolled and now it goes up onto the toe. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Nice job. Your job over the next couple of weeks with the irons is to really continue to emphasize the upper body getting more left. You're doing a good job with it, but I think that the next couple of weeks is like, okay, let's really kind of pedal to the metal, mm -hmm. yeah. getting left, you know, feeling like you're almost swinging a little bit left as well. Mm -hmm. That's a lot and I love it. I love seeing the numbers. It helps me kind of bring it into like my reality of what exactly I need to work on. So this right here is my favorite club in the bag, even over my two iron when I'm hitting it well but that's probably the same for about every golfer out there. I think the thing that I'm, I'm more concerned about is like how do I manage my misses? And I think that's probably a common thing, but when I miss it, I miss it like where it takes me out of play. 
Because there's a lot of times when I don't hit driver because I'm like, well, and then I'll have, you know, 190 and a part four and that's just not good. That was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about too, because obviously you have a lot of speed. So this is a, this club can be a huge asset to you. But I feel like when I see you play, you know, in your videos, quite often you're not using driver. <laughs> Yeah. You're hitting iron off the tee, yeah. and you're taking that strength out of your hand. And I get it, obviously, you know, when the misses are out of play or out of control, then it's hard to want to pull driver. So we, we have to figure out, you know, what we need to do to tighten that up. Yeah. But also know for you that the weeks where you're hitting driver well, I want to see you go like 64, 65s, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And if you happen to have a week where, you know, the driver's not behaving as well, and you shoot 75, 76, 77, or whatever, you know, for you with, with as much of an asset as your speed is, I'd be more inclined to see you use the driver more and just and really capitalize on your good days and know, okay, the not so good days, we need to minimize those, but yeah. you've got to use that driver. Yeah, you guys know I'm using the um, LTDX LS with the Ventus TR shaft. I've kind of bounced back and forth, but I feel like this is kind of where I've landed right now. And I don't know, what do you say? We hit a couple and just yeah. kind of see where we're at. Let's do it. I'm gonna grab some teas. Have you always had this much speed with driver? Is it something that you've trained? Like I've tra actually trained with Kyle quite a few times and that was just because he saw that I had speed and so he wanted me to get faster and he wants me to compete in long drive, which I want to do at least one time. I feel like I've always been pretty fast with it. You know, you said earlier that the miss tends to be a fade with the driver. Would it be more of a push fade, like start right, go right, or? It's more like a push, like spinny okay. slice. Got it. <laughs> because that's very different from like a slice, like let's call it like an over the top slice. Yeah. It's not a shot that starts left and ends up going right. It's a yeah. shot that starts right and goes way right. Yeah. And I couldn't hit a draw if you, you know, had a gun to my head. We, we gotta get this driver to where you're, you know, you're confident with it. All right, here's a couple more. I know where we're at. One thing I've noticed, I think we talked about this a little bit last time, is I noticed a lot, that I have a lot of head drop in my backswing. I'll think about like staying tall, you know, up to the top, and then just, just rotating. But I don't necessarily have a lot of swing thoughts. I think I, I, I struggle a little bit mentally of like thinking about what I don't want to happen. So I'll think like, well, don't slice it. It's probably not a good thought, but I think that probably happens. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's like, dude, this guy's all messed up with the driver. No, I mean, this is going to be really valuable video for those that are watching. If you hook it with your driver, I mean, this is a great, going to be a great video to watch because even though your shots are going to the right, you obviously, you, you, you're not a slicer. The path is to the right. Swing direction is to the right. The things you're, you're talking about with getting stuck, you know, I'm kind of seeing it all on the video here and we'll get into it for sure. Let's see one more okay. and we'll dive into it. Okay, so we'll put the same lines that we had on with the iron swing, right? Yellow line's the plane line, blue line, that Hogan plane that we don't wanna break with the club. Mm -hmm. Now, the big things that we're seeing here, you know, if we take a look through some of these numbers and we chatted a bit about swing direction, which is where your entire swing is pointing, you know, your entire swing right now on this particular shot was eight degrees to the right. Okay, so let's just kind of take a look at the swing. I think setup looks great. So we're happy days on the setup. Back swing looks good. Now here, you're gonna see that the club head, I mean, the club head gets so far behind you here, it's actually out of the screen. <laughs> yeah. right? This is probably where you're starting to get that stuck feel because the club is way back over here, the golf ball's here, There's, you're in the way. Yeah. Right? And the face is still probably wide open. Exactly. It's right here. It's like in it. here. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's in here, so it's swinging well out to the right. It's difficult to time that club face up. This ball is going right to right. Yeah, exactly. The reason why I asked if you hit any hooks, because a lot of people that would do this would start to overwork the hands. And, and yeah. just Exactly, and there's yeah. your snap hook, right? Yeah. So. But I don't necessarily have a lot of movement in my hands. Yeah, you so. don't tend to have that miss. So we're gonna need to figure out how to get this club a little more on plane, a little more in front, not so stuck and behind. Um, we'll take a look at the face on view because there's a little bit of body doing that, but most of our field today, most of our thoughts are gonna be trying to get that club a little more out in front. It's like back there. And then from there, it's just whoop. 
<laughs> Bradley just gave me a whoo, that's pretty bad. <laughs> what do we have here? This looks like some matrix stuff. This is gonna get a little interesting here. So this is a look at your swing on how the club is moving through impact. And you know, we talked about like that hula hoop. Mm -hmm. Well, this is like that cutoff section of the hula hoop, like that, you know, pink or red noodle that I had. Mm -hmm. And so like this gray line right through here, that's the target line. Okay. Now this, this kind of like glass plane that we're looking at here mm -hmm. is like I said, the bottom part of your swing and where that is pointing is your swing direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this was this particular line right here, this white line is 8.2 degrees to the right of the target. So that's where the base of your entire swing is right now, which is too much. Oh my goodness. Too much to the right. <laughs> yeah. We talked about where we strike the ball on that swing direction is our path, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were hitting up on that. So we got it late in the swing and we're still five, six, whatever from the inside. Mm -hmm. So imagine that swing, if you were swinging that much to the right with your irons, your path would be like 10, 12 degrees from the inside. Yeah, Okay. exactly. So that'll give you an idea, even though, you know, the path number doesn't look like it's, it's too much from the inside, that tells us, you know, your entire swing is a long way to the right at the moment. Setting us up for too much, you know, manipulation. So obviously you can tell, you know, my driver's really close to being perfect here and, uh, you know, there's not much going on. I was, just, I was just about to say, it's not all, I mean, there's a lot of good things, but like yeah. putting maybe a bit more of a negative spin on it than, than yeah. there really is. But let's just get this thing more on plane, right? So for those watching at home, you know, I like to see the ball position kind of just, just inside of that front heel right there. This, I think this is pretty good. You know, we want a little bit of spine tilt. Um, with Micah, you know, that's a pretty neutral spine right there. We're not going to adjust that because he does have a move behind, but I would say like three key things you know, for hitting up on the ball, ball goes in front of the stance, kind of inside that front foot, a little bit of spine tilt, stay behind it. That's good for all you guys. Maybe Micah doesn't need to do any more than he's already doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really nice shoulder turn. The lower body, this is doing what we said it should do. The lower body's going forwards, the upper body's going back. You know, is it a little too much? Maybe, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, let's get this thing more on plane. Okay, so take your setup for me here, mate. Good, and take it up to the top and stop. Great, so as we saw, everything is getting kind of stuck in behind, club head's getting behind too much here. For you, you're gonna have to feel like you're going more this way. It's gonna feel like you're kind of throwing the club head a little over the top, mm -hmm. right? It is gonna feel like you're swinging across the ball, even though you're not. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna be our goal right here, let's call it the delivery position here, mm -hmm. is to get this club head like from the down the line camera closer to your hands, maybe a little inside, but not mm -hmm. all the way back over here. Yeah. So here from this view here, club head, if you're looking down the line, is closer to being in line with your hands. The more you go this way, obviously, the more the club head is inside, it might even be outside of the camera shot there. Mm -hmm. So that's where you were before, we're trying to get the club head in the in the picture there just inside of the hands this would be outside of the hands and this is this is kind of what we're shooting for take your setup there i'm going to throw this bag kind of underneath the plane oh gosh yeah you know let's just kind of pull this ball out of the way for a second and let's make a couple of practice swings that's going to feel pretty wild i'm going to be texting cobra being like get me a new driver <laughs> i'm about to snap this jab feels so crazy. Feel ridiculous? It feels like I'm just like <laughs> out there, but yeah. it's probably not. No, okay, let's take a look and see. So yes, the hands are probably getting out a little bit. Understandable when there's a massive bag right in your way. Yeah. Right? But let's look at where the club head is relative to your hands. See mm -hmm. the, the club head right in here? Yeah. Right? Oh my gosh, yeah. Right? So the club head is over here now. And then obviously before it wasn't even in the screen. Be prepared to see some wild shots at first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But well, let's let's work on it. I'm all about this right here. All right. Here we go. It probably felt like you just hit a 30-yard cut. Yeah, it did. Right? It felt it felt like I literally came so far over the top. But look at this. I mean, it's still you know 
it's, it's still even a little bit still even a little behind, bit. which is unbelievable. Hopefully you guys are getting as much out of this as I am back home. And uh, like I said, we have some really cool stuff coming up with me and Mike that we're gonna talk a little bit more about in a little bit, so stay tuned. This was the shot you just did over here, and this is the earlier swing where club head is almost outside of the screen. You know, club is inside of the screen here, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. All right, there's your Hogan plane, let's see. Right now it's up the, the Hogan plane, mm -hmm. right? This one was- Definitely mm -hmm. outside absolutely of it. Absolutely shattered it. It actually doesn't get under that Hogan plane until once it's up over your head. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that's just, a, that, one, that one on the right is so out of, out of all out of sorts. Move this in just a little bit. Make you a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, I like it. This is mm -hmm. a little bit of an exaggeration you know, getting yeah. you over to the fade side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously that bag is really, it's kind of somewhat intimidating, especially when you're swinging a club as fast as you are. That was actually pretty close to the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the exit right here, mate. Oh, that is that is so much better. So much better. Your, on the way through, your club was going out to swing direction, that little number right there. Mm -hmm. Your club was going out there before. Now it's coming around and it's, the only reason why it's coming around, it's more on plane here. So it's just swinging around before mm -hmm. from here, it had no choice but to go yeah, out this way. Exactly. Right? Get a little oh. more uncomfortable here. Does it, you might not be able to answer this yet. Does it feel potentially less stuck? It definitely does, but it feels, it feels like I'm, I'm slicing it. Yeah. But I'm, I mean, that's not really a slice. That was just open face. It yeah. curved to the right because the face was open. Oh boy. <laughs> boy, if that was our go-to drive. I know, right? <laughs> that's, that would be happy days. You know, that's just that teeny little fade. That and you was carry incredible. that thing 300 something straight down the middle. That is happy days. Just from looking at the face on here, like it looks decent. I don't know. Do you feel like there should be a little more weight forward or? I think you're good. I think you're good right now from face on. The really cool thing is that these are at full speed. Yeah, I'm not even really, you know, pushing it too hard and it's 125, 186, which is, you know, it's, it's pretty normal. Yeah, if you had have told me that this is where we were going to be by the end of the lesson today, I would have, I would have signed up on that for sure. <laughs> yeah, after yeah. seeing those first couple of swings I made with the driver. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were hitting that little fade on the course, that would be, yeah. be amazing. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm going for. It feels so good and it makes me so happy to know that I wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't anything too crazy to change with the driver to be able to get back there. Yeah, see, there's the little little fade. Oh, that's so good. It looks so much better. Oh, that just that feels amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is just that is exactly why we're here, and we have some really cool things coming up with me and Mike. You guys have seemed to really really enjoy this uh, you know coaching series that we've started. It's kind of like a thirty thousand foot view of a lesson. Just to drop a little bit hint, we are going to be putting something together that is going to give you guys extreme detail and extreme efficiency and everything when it comes to coaching. And Mike is going to be the center of that. So stay tuned. This is going to be awesome, and I can't wait to just kind of keep showing you guys what we got. Once again, man, eight under. This place is absolutely incredible. Everything is linked in the description. I mean, we're only two lessons in, and I just feel like. This is just awesome. So we're signing off at 8 under today and I will keep you guys updated on how this is going. Peace. <laughs>